Hello everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Look who's in the house. It's Jason Levine. Hey We're there. In Atlanta. <laughs> welcome everyone. And our moderator's in the house. We'll give people folks a few seconds to get in. This is kind of like an impromptu stream. That's right, right. We're gonna do an ask us anything. This is your chance to ask questions about um, video, audio, photography, Photoshop, Premiere, After Effects, Audition, and media encoder, media encoder, character animator, life in general. Life in general. <laughs> <laughs> this is truly the definition of an impromptu live stream. Yeah, we're like plugging yeah. stuff in and connecting to all the computers. Oh, lower third. Yeah, look at that. This, is, this came together like within the last 20 minutes. And the best was, and I blame myself, we almost forgot about microphones for right. audio. So, so I was like, yeah, it's like yeah. getting ready to start. And I was like, wait a minute, microphones. I had to run and get the second microphone. So we're here. All right, man, we got a lot of people in here. Yeah. Retarius, Daryl, Jonathan, Moonlight, Aurelia, Islam Hani, Evil Cerise. Evil Cerise is always in the house yeah. doing good things for us. Melissa, Robert, hey there. Let me put on my do not disturb so I don't get any phone calls or beeps. Okay. Well, no XD today. There are dedicated XD streams, though I invite you to check those out. How about Muse? You can ask a question about Muse. I don't mind that. What's up, Manjinder? Ihajo, good to see you. What's up, Rufus? Rufus in the house. What's going on? Fearless leader. That's right. Coming to you live from Atlanta. So uh, just finished up the Terminus conference. Anyone who's tuning in, if you were here this weekend, big uh, education broadcast conference based around, well, not just broadcast, photography, web design, all kinds of things. Uh, really nice attendees. LA19 Productions, what's Hello, up? Hello, LA19 Productions. <laughs> you know, a lot of people always say, say hi to me. That's right. <laughs> Renee, Renee, nice to see Renee's you. Renee's in the house, what's going on? All right, so I snagged Jason. He's in town doing an education conference this weekend. I said, you know, Jason, you know, what are you doing? What time do you leave? And he's like, well, I got to catch a flight at like one o'clock. I was like, well, that means if we get you in on the stream for like 30 minutes, you have plenty of time. Plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, that's what TSA Pre is for. Right. Yeah, all right. Plenty of time. So, you know, we'll just, I got a police escort to the airport. We can get them there right. on time. It'll be Perfect. great. Yeah. That's just regular yeah, day just for regular us. Yeah, just regular day for us. Yeah, right. No right. traffic here. Yeah. We're in Atlanta. South, south, what, south? East, Southwest Atlanta, Southwest Atlanta. All right, go live. Okay, so Jason, um, we, we said we would answer questions and mm -hmm. we will. Yep. So what kinds of things until they start asking questions, mm -hmm. what kind of things do you normally get? Like what are people always asking? Yeah, well, you know, lately it's been a lot about um, publishing to social and not probably because VidCon, I guess, has just wrapped. Mm -hmm. um, vertical video and actually how to create things like vertical video snapchat stories and instagram yeah. stories it's uh it's been cropping up a lot and for good reason because it's a thing right and traditionally we you know as video producers we hate vertical video right but you can't ignore vertical video anymore right and part of that too and we were discussing this is that generally the reason people hated it was because they were shooting vertically. Yeah, you see this, this skinny video right, in a, with in a the pillar box, frame, right? right pillar right. box in sixty nine, and that's that's not what what vertical is today. That's right. not what we experience, you know, on our phones via Snapchat and Instagram. Um, vertical done vertically looks awesome. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. people are usually watching it or seeing it on their phones, right? Exactly. Or on a device that um, is in vertical mode, so then it looks great. Yeah. So now Jordan's asking, how's the VR editing coming along? So yeah, Jordan's fantastic. So you know, uh, many of you may have, or actually many of you may not have heard. So uh, last week, Adobe did uh, an, an acquisition where we now will have the Metal Skybox plugins um, directly integrated into Premiere Pro and After Effects. So what does that mean uh, if you're just getting started in VR? Well, so for a lot of the cameras out there, things like the Nikon Key Mission, uh, and I think the Ricoh does too, that they stitch it automatically, right? right? Yeah, you when, shoot, I shoot, when I tap, press the button on my Ricoh, I get a 360. Right, you get a 360. Yeah. So I've got the original Mach 1 Samsung Gear 360. That media is raw, and you gotta, previously you had to go to there, they sort of had a licensed third-party Windows-only software to do the stitching before you could actually begin editing in Premiere. 
Um, if you didn't have that, the option was you had to use something like Metal Skybox. So that will be coming, yes Ziggy, that will be coming um, directly into Premiere Pro After Effects in the, in the near future. Um, but this is a huge, huge, huge uh, addition to our sort of VR story. And um, for anyone who's thinking about getting into VR, um, you know, this is really going to change the way you author it. It'll change the way you think about shooting it. Because now, regardless of what camera, regardless of what even format, you know, Premiere Pro wants equirectangular. Skybox does everything. Yeah. Metal, metal handles everything. So it's really going to make the process a heck of a lot easier. Um, and uh, again, stitching will be, it's just, oh, yeah, of course. Yep, we do it. We've got it. It'll be in there. And uh, it's pretty awesome. So, thank you, Ziggy. So yeah, so a lot about that. Um, in fact, here, I was just gonna try and pull up. Also, just on that too, of course, don't forget that we added ambisonic audio, which you can uh, experience live here on face uh, on, on YouTube. <laughs> on YouTube, yeah. So, um, we're always on Facebook or We're YouTube always on Facebook, or, or something, so it's like we have to remember where Get, we are now. Getting confused. All right. um, and the cool thing with ambisonics is, you know, it really gives you that true truly immersive uh, VR 360 experience. Um, a lot of devices captured out there now. I've got the H2N, mm -hmm. which is you know fairly inexpensive. It does four channel spatial, converted into ambisonics, which you can pass directly through Premiere Pro. Um, and again, you can display it on YouTube and it just, it, it works wonderfully. So uh, let's see here. After Effects has offered the world of cinema a spectacular variety of SFX, VFX, thanks for making it easier. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, DS6 Profit. No, we're, uh, you know, After Effects continues to really drive so much in, uh, well, in, 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 in the VFX world and in film and television and broadcast and everywhere. It just keeps getting better. I mean, we sure. were talking about AE2 now that there's so much, that's so much easier and accessible now than it used to be, even right. just a few years ago, right? Like, uh, so... Fix imperfect. What steps to take when any of the Adobe program crashes? I actually have a I have an answer for this. Okay, let's hear it. First thing is. Oh, ooh, let me write this down. That's right. <laughs> First thing is um, use lots of expletives. No. No. That's not it. I do that all the time. I've done that on stream, but I, I mute myself. Um, what to do? I mean, seriously, uh, you know, it does happen. So depending upon what you're using, you know, what one key tip, and this is not that they crash often, that but something you can keep in mind, particularly on the video side. I'll let you speak to the Photoshop side. Okay. Um, when we're, you know, we leverage a lot of inter-app dynamic links. So you know, you can open After Effects headlessly from within Premiere Pro. Vice versa, you can send things directly to Media Encoder now from Character Animator. You can dynamic link into Audition. And if you occasionally run into some slowness or crashes um, on Windows or Mac, it's a good idea to open up your activity monitor <clears throat> and just make sure that a lot of those, um, you know, so one of them is like, uh, one of them is called, I think, the dynamic link server. There's like an AE render core. Just make sure that some of those processes aren't continuously running. Sometimes they get stuck if you crash. Uh, and if you kill those, usually you'll be back in business. Um, you know, obviously we try not to have yeah, that happen, and, but and I would it say happens. if it's a consistent, especially if you can repeat it, like if you can do something right. that every time you do it, it crashes, that's definitely something support wants to know about so right. it can get fixed because you may have discovered a bug that happens when you do a cer certain set of things under a certain set of conditions. And uh, if that's the case, then um, by all means, contact Adobe Care, yep. which they're on Twitter, actually. You can that's just right. tweet to at Adobe Care and tell them your problem and they will either help you get it resolved or at least document it so it can get fixed. Yeah, no, they're really good about that and very, very fast on the response time. And uh, yeah, you know, in general too, and don't forget, uh, and this is something which I've been, <laughs> I've been guilty of on stream. If, it, if you do have a crash, you know, at some point it says, do you want to send your crash report to Adobe? And I always just click like past it, no, don't bother, whatever, no, no, don't bother. that this. helps. Because then they get the logs. It helps. And then yeah. you're actually, you're, you're, you're saving time in finding out what might actually be happening because maybe someone else is having a similar problem. So what's up, Andrew Cavanaugh? So, um, right, so yeah. So you got something you want to show or you want me to show something? Why don't you show first? something first? Oh. I'm loading up some and things here. And yep. that. Okay. okay. So um, let's switch over to my machine. And why are we not seeing that machine? Hold on. Hold on. You're seeing my other display. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure the mirroring is set up right. Aunt Pruitt is in the house. Hello. Nice to see you. Da, da, da. Let 
Alberto Comper. Ah, very yeah, nice to see you. All right, while you're doing that, Random Marv is asking, when exporting a video, how do you change the box-shaped video to fit the entire screen? I'm not exactly sure what you mean, box shape. If you're talking about scaling to fit or preventing letter boxing or pillar boxing, um, you can, of course, use the scale transform from within the motion tab under effects controls in Premiere, um, if that's what you're talking about. Not it might need a little more detail on what you're asking about that. Let's try it one more time. Okay, now we're good. Now you got it. Okay. All right. And Ziggy's asking about vertical. So I'm going to load up some vertical and you can show this in the meantime. Yeah, uh, for a sec. Let's put that back the other way. There we go. All right. Um, so I've got Photoshop open. A couple questions I normally get on a regular basis have to do with layers and masking and just layers in general. So people are always asking layering questions and background questions and things like that. So uh, typically what people will always tell you to do if you're going to work on a photo is to create a duplicate layer. That way, in case you do something wrong, you will you know, always have the original to get back to. And yes, there's some, some validity to that. And yes, you should do that if that's your workflow. But that's not, of course, the only workflow. So there's a couple ways to do that. One, if you wanted to simply duplicate the background, um, the easiest way of doing that is just simply dragging the background layer down to the new layer icon. And uh, here, let me make sure you can see that. Hold on, let me bring my window up. I just realized you can't see the new layer icon. All right, there we go. Let's have that, hide that panel. Okay, so we'll drag it down so you can see the new layer icon down the lower right. When you drag it down to the new, new layer icon, that will give you a duplicate layer. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, let me undo that, is from the keyboard. So whatever layer you have selected, you can duplicate that layer by simply hitting on the Mac, Command J, on the PC, Control J. So if I hit Command J, Control J, that will duplicate the layer. Of course, you should always name your layers. So that way you'll, once you get more than a few, you'll know what they're for. So we can say this is gonna be our base layer. And then, of course, we can work from there. Now, another way so that you don't necessarily um, have to always duplicate the layer is to convert the layer to a smart object. That way, you're kind of putting a wrapper around the layer so that when you do things to it or distort it, you're not um, causing permanent damage to the pixels themselves. So a couple ways to do that. You can go to your uh, filter menu, and you can say convert for smart filters and that will put the wrapper around it so that when you make a change um, you're only making a change to the smart object but not changing or damaging any of the pixels that are in that smart object and that will give you the smart object icon in the lower right hand corner so that way you know okay that's a smart object anything i do to it won't hurt the pixels of that layer itself so for example if i were to run a filter on it like the camera raw filter and in the camera raw filter, if I were to want to um, maybe brighten up part of that photo, she's kind of like in a very dark setting. And if I just wanted to add a little like spotlight to that, I can bring up the camera raw filter eventually. <laughs> Here it comes, there we go. And I can bring up the radio filter. I've got the radio filter set to a, a slight higher, slightly higher exposure. Therefore, I can bring that exposure up. I can move it around. I can tilt it, put it at just the right angle. I can spread it out more and get just that part of the face a little bit more illuminated. I can also turn it down. Maybe it's too bright. Turn it up. That's way too bright. But you get the idea. And then once I click OK, because I converted that to a smart object first, once it renders that onto the smart object, it will be in a non-destructive state because I'll always be able to go in and turn that back off or go right back to it and continue working on it. So because that's a smart object, it added that as a smart filter layer and added the camera raw or anything else I add to it now will just be listed here. So if I want to get back to those settings, I can click back on the control. I could always turn it off if I want to see what it was before I did those changes. And that would be a, another example of a non-destructive workflow. All right.
Sweet. Sweet. You All right. something? Yeah. So, uh, two things. So, yeah, we can switch over to my machine. So, yeah, so Marv, you were talking about the letterboxing, because every time you export, it always exports with YouTube 1080, and you still have a letterbox. So if you have a letterbox and you're using the 1080 HD preset, it could be one of two things. Um, first of all, if you were to go into your, and let me just pull up something that's actually 1080 widescreen. Um, if you're seeing letterboxing, uh, that tells me one of two things. One, either that your original content is not a direct derivative of, you know, 1920, 1080, 1280, 720, etc. Um, which is why you get those letterboxing uh, artifacts, or perhaps your pixel aspect ratio is incorrect. So here you can see I've got uh, some native footage. This is 1920-1080, um, all right, progressive, square. Uh, you can see that 1.0 is giving us the pixel aspect ratio there. So if we were to go to the YouTube preset, which uses that same thing for 1080p, go into the video tab here, let's give it a second. Uh, you'll want to make sure that under video, pixel aspect, you've got it set to square pixels, okay? So if you're not seeing that and you're not seeing this width and height, it tells me that your original footage is, is it's some other variation. You know, and there are other other sort of in between sizes, I suppose. Maybe you were doing 1440, 1080, yeah. something like that. Um, but otherwise, you should see you, you shouldn't see um, any kind of letterboxing there at all. Okay, so now someone was just asking too about let's actually see what do you, you know what do you mean vertical video vertically? So this is kind of cool <laughs> because this is again this is something that you know. I think there's been a lot of confusion about vertical and sort of the horizontal widescreen 169 frame versus vertical made for vertical. Um, so this is actually something that I cut and I showed this on a stream last week, mm -hmm. designed for to be like a Snapchat story. And the idea is that... That's pretty cool. Yeah. I never thought of doing it that way. Right. Well, and this was something that I, dude, I learned by one, talking to a lot of people from Snapchat, yeah. but also watching the stories and realizing that you have to you actually have to rethink the way that you use the frame. Right. You can still use widescreen content, but you're or not just, trying to, but right. But, but you, you don't want the black bars at the top. That's the right, correct. exactly. Yeah. And also it's the idea, oh yes, thank you Ziggy. It's the idea that if you shoot something vertically, that's gonna fill that whole vertical frame. Right. You're actually doing 1080 by 1920. Right. That's gonna look awesome. So in the case of this stuff here, and part of this is that you gotta, you gotta think of different ways that you actually divide up that vertical frame. So in this first clip, and I can play this through, and by the way, this, this includes um, some animated graphics from our motion graphics, uh, essential graphics panel. Hold on, let me just make sure that I'm not in full here. Go into like half quality. Fractional playback there, and I'll, I'll just turn the sound down so I can keep talking. Um, so you can see there's actually three HD videos there with animated graphics, little transition. Okay, there's a vertical shot filling the entire frame with another transition. Now I've split it into two, like in half, using that vertical frame, using widescreen content. It's just a different way of thinking about how you frame it. And you know what? You know, you're, you're making me think, rethink vertical video because if we go back to standard definition, mm -hmm. we hate it seeing right. four by three on That's our big right. 16 by nine television. That's right. No different. Right. You, what it is, it's not that you hate vertical video, you hate seeing vertical video on the wrong device. That's right. On the, the wrong screen. On the wrong format, exactly. Right. And that's, You don't mind looking at vertical right. video on your phone when you're holding your phone in right. portrait mode. Right, because it looks you awesome. You mind it when you turn it in landscape mode and it's this little rectangle in the middle. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's really just a way of rethinking how you compose the shot. Right. Right. Now, um, one of the things that I showed on the stream last week was, um, and here, I can even do this live. Um, so yesterday, I was going to show sort of the creation, you know, starting from scratch. So I, uh, I just happened to see Queen in concert the other night with Adam Lambert. Amazing. If you can catch it in your city, wherever you are in the world, highly recommend that. And uh, so I was going to, I was going to make a video. I shot some video at the concert. So I thought, okay, I'll do like a, you know, a fake video of me, you know, doing like a wrap up of the show. So in the hotel room yesterday, I shot video of myself. I'll bring this into the source monitor here. Give me a second. So now this is actually, um, I think this is 4K. 
All right, so yeah, you're seeing my source monitor there. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. So again, I've got the sound off, so it's okay. You don't need to hear what I'm saying here. But this was 4K shot, you know, 2160 by 3840, right? And this is me kind of giving a little, a little intro to the footage that I'm going to show of Queen live in concert. Now, one other good sort of practice, again, talking with people from Snapchat, I met these guys and gals at NAB, awesome, was that uh, a lot of times, because obviously like your iPhone, they're shooting, everyone's shooting 4K anyway. The nice thing about shooting 4K is that if you put it inside of a 1080, 1920 right, timeline, still have plenty of resolution, plenty of resolution, and more ways to re recompose. Re right. All right, even for Snapchat stories, no one's really building 4K vertical. It, that, you can, but they're not even displaying it that way. So, as they were telling me, shoot it in 4K, but still edit inside of like a, a 1080, 1920 window. It's just going to allow you to kind of rethink the concept even more. So. There's a couple things you can do. Now, again, by default, Premiere, you drag in vertical footage. And if you right click or control click and simply say new sequence from clip, mm -hmm. it's automatically going to build you an actual vertical sequence that fills the entire frame. My favorite command. Yeah, it's, it's, it is. It's awesome. But again, now let me just check the, the, the properties of this. I'll pull up the preview area. Okay, yeah, so this one you can see. This is a. This is actually 4K. So in fact, I don't really want that for this. I want to do this in a 1080, 1920. So if we go instead into the, um, the new sequence option here. Now, I already built a couple of these. I've got them under custom. You can start with any, any preset, and I'll just show you real quickly how you can modify those. So here's a Snapchat one that I built. If you look here at the, at the, uh, the details, it says this preset will create a 9 by 16 HD sequence, 1080, 1920 at 30 frames. That's the standard from the right. iPhone, okay? If you want to modify any preset in Premiere, under settings, here in your frame size is where you make that adjustment. So you can adjust the time base, the time, you know, the 24 frame, 23976, frame size, square pixels, progressive, everything else pretty much is the same. From it. And I, I highly recommend starting with like the DSLR presets. That's just kind of a good way to start. You don't even have to mess about with anything else. So we're just going to take this. Let's go ahead and, oh, sorry, I clicked out of there. Let's go ahead and use that preset. And then we'll drag this 4K uh, vertical into that. And you'll kind of see, again, just how it gives you even more sort of reframing options. So now I'm going to take that video of me. Let's drag that down here. And this is another cool feature of Premiere. Because I'm putting 4K into a 1080 timeline, it says, do you want me to make it 4K or keep You'll the 1080? Keep right, yeah. I want to keep the existing settings. Right. So we're going to keep that. All right. So now you can see, like, yeah, it's, uh, it's not exactly right. And of course, now I'm out of frame. So scale it. Right? Scale it down and yeah. fix it and reposition it. So yeah, so I'm going to scale it. No, wait, wait, wait. Can, can you just right click on it and do the scale to frame size? So you can scale the frame size, but this is, again, in terms of composition, because ah, okay. yeah. I've got all that yeah, other, yeah, 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 yeah. right. I was shooting yeah, yeah, it with yeah, yeah. my little, uh, gotcha, gotcha, my Arca okay, mount. Okay, okay. Now yeah, I can make yeah. it look better. Notice yeah. I've even got like the table yeah, here. Okay. So you're, yeah. yeah, you got more than, you don't want to scale the whole thing down. Correct. I've got yeah. more than I need. Okay. And I can also just do this right, right on screen right, in right, here. Right. So yeah, maybe I'll even scale it up, you know, just so that it's kind of my body. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded weird, but you know what I mean. All right. Kind of right right like that, sort of a mid shot, you know? Wind this, here I am doing a hair flip, of course, before I get ready, and there's my intro, you know? And again, done vertically, now this looks right. like it yeah, should. That's the way it should look. Watching right. it on the phone, it's gonna be perfect. And at this point, if we wanted to add, let's say we wanted to add a graphic, a title, a lower third, yep. all right? So we can go into something like Essential Graphics, now this is going to be completely uh, reconfigured here screen wise, but let's go ahead and if I go into my CC libraries, now I've got a bunch of lower thirds that I already built that were 16.9, um, uh, not 9 by 16, but that's okay. We can again use those and just recompose them for All right, this tell you what, while you're doing that, yeah. I'm going to build a lower third for you. Okay, awesome. All right, and I'll share it over to you. Oh, that's great. Okay. Let's go new. So yeah, so I'm going to just show you, like we've and got some basic 1080 ones. vertical, right? 1080, 1080 vertical. Yep, yeah, yep. Okay. So here in Essential Graphics, we actually have a basic lower third, all right? Now again, this is, this is uh, frame designed for 16.9. Um, we can still use this 
in a 9 by 16 environment, drag it on there, and you can actually see it, it just appears right, right where it needs to be. Zoom in a little bit here. I don't even think this one has any kind of uh, animation or anything. It doesn't. Very simple. That's okay. We can do some basic stuff to this. So I'll put in my name. Grab our text tool, which I know Terry was saying one of his <laughs> absolutely one of the favorite new features in this release is having the text tool in here. So Jason Levine. And we'll grab our second line of text down here. Live from Atlanta. If I can type it. Well, live from Atlanta. I'm doing great. All right. And maybe we need to scale this whole thing up as well. So we can do that in a number of different ways. Um, we can scale directly the text here. So I want to make this a little bit bigger. All right, so let's scale that up like that. We can also do something like a horizontal centering. Maybe we don't need it down at the bottom. Let's grab that second line of text down here. Same thing, we'll scale this up. Oh, and did I forget? I lost the J. That was good. Let's come back over here. Select my J. Scale that up too. Okay. And then maybe we'll do just a little bit of fly on animation via an opacity change. So come over to transform. Terry's laughing too because we were talking about our both of our trackpads and our on our laptops have seen better days. Yeah, I gotta get my repair. <laughs> the right side of my trackpad just doesn't click anymore. It's just not doing what it once did. All right, so I'm wind this back. Let's drop the opacity so that'll fly on like that. And then maybe we'll have the live from Atlanta come on just a little bit later. So same thing, opacity. Oh, you're getting fancy. Wind that back. Well, you know, only for you, T. <laughs> All right, wind that back. All right, and now when we play this, all right, and again, I assume I'd fade up. You got your text flying on, and we're done vertically. And then you can imagine from here, we cut this into something like this, which we saw, you know, a couple moments ago. And again, we just start recomposing, reframing, done vertically. And it's just a new way to kind of deliver content. But the idea is when you take this and you export this over to your phone and you're viewing it vertically, it just looks awesome because yeah. that's how it's being consumed, that's how it's being designed, and it just kind of works. Totally agree. Sweet. All right, any more questions on there? While I'm putting this together. Look in here. <laughs> Ant says the <clears throat> the hair flip, the Beetle J signature for let's do this. I, I think I actually said let's do this in the video. Yeah, that's pretty funny that you say that. Let's do this. Let's do this. Take it. <clears throat> okay. Ah, uh, Ihajo, I know. You will see it. Remember, this is uh, this is V1 of Essential Graphics. So right. we will get that. We will get RTL worked into there. So this is kind of what I'm working on here. Oh, nice. Oh, that's so much nicer. So let's put this all together in a library for you. That's awesome. Because you can pull, no, you, yeah, you can pull this in from a library and. Yeah, now this uh, wouldn't be, right, now this is because you're making it in Photoshop. I'd pull this in. As a graphic. As, right, yeah. as a graphic, not yeah. as an, an oh, essential yeah, yeah, graphic. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. However, right. if Terry animated this here, the animation should carry over. True. Right. So let's make a new library, uh, Jason and Terry. All right, I see we've got Sven has asked, okay, if you already covered, what quality demands do you have for Adobe Stock video? Bit rate, bit depth, resolution, and should it be color corrected or flat? Um, so I can speak to that real quickly while Terry's working on this. So um, then there's, there's quite, a few, uh, quite a few specs. You can find that actually on the um, stock.adobe.com. But so in general, um, 
I mean, bit rate, of course, as high as possible. Bit depth, most of the stuff, if, certainly if it's H.264, <clears throat> will be 8-bit. Um, if you're working in 4K, uploading ProRes 422, 444, um, it can be 10 or 12-bit. That's legit. Um, again, resolution. What we're really actively seeking is a lot of 4K, but there's a ton of 1080, and I keep uploading 1080, and it keeps getting accepted, and it sells. And most stuff is yeah, still... the minimum requirement is 720, the maximum yeah. requirement is 4K. Right. Um, so anything in between, preferably 4K, right. but 1080p sells all day long. And Sven, I can tell you, so in, regarding should it be color corrected or flat, um, I did a test myself to see whether they would accept flat. This is already going back a year ago, and it can be either or. Which or? Oh, it's, uh, it. yes, okay. So, um, yeah, uh, I've got footage, in fact, uh, oh, I don't have my browser open anymore. Um, I've uploaded stuff that's flat. Uh, yep. I've, I've uploaded stuff that's flat and you know, for most video creators, we prefer flat because it's much easier to color grade and match against other shots. Um, you'll see both. So, uh, you know, and sometimes, in fact, if you go, if you search on any of the videos that I've shot up there, um, cause I, we all, we both have, Terry has an amazing catalog on stock. I've, I've just got a, a wee, a small little one at this point, but I did an experiment where I uploaded the same content, uh, flat and graded. Some of the shots, the curators accepted both. Some, they only took the flat and didn't take the graded. And they said, because it's too similar to something else. Right. Um, there are humans involved. In, in yeah, curating. see, when it comes to video, you gotta look at it, or any content, really, because I get the same question when people are asking, should, and Kyle Webster's in the house. Hey, you guys Kyle! Should, you guys should follow Kyle Webster. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, Just on our live stream last week from Paris, too. Kyle, awesome to see you. All right, but um, back to the stock question, and it's, it's always a debate, because whether it's a photo or a video, you gotta ask yourself, um, am I uploading this for someone to buy it and finish it? like you're saying, grade it if it's a video or retouch it if it's a photo? Or would the vast majority of people be looking to buy something that's ready to use right. and they can use it? Right. And so when it comes to photos, I tend to want to do some light retouching to it. Not over the top, not crazy, but at least get rid of some of the simple things that I wouldn't want to have to buy an image and do myself. Now, that doesn't say that you know, somebody might be looking for a tutorial image where they want to go ahead and use that image to do all the retouching and show all the retouching stuff. But at the same time, it really depends on um, who you think the bigger market's going to be. And I think, honestly, the bigger markets, people that are buying, because you're going to stock to buy things so you can use them. Mm -hmm. I, I, with video, it may be different. People may be wanting to do all the color grading and everything after yeah. the fact, but I'm going to say that most people are looking for content that they can immediately use. Right. Yeah. And it re it's, it's really, it goes both ways. The nice thing though, is that I can tell you from personal experience, they accept both. Yeah. They accept both, but yeah. which one's going to sell? Right. No, <laughs> and I can, they accept it doesn't and, mean it's and I can also sell. say I haven't sold any flat ones just yet, but again, to, yeah. for, for me, it makes sense. I would, I would want flat. Right, because you're a flat. video producer, That's you gotta right. put that video in and right. make it look like the rest of your project. Totally, totally. But good. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's see. So, um, Evil Series, you were just asking, is there any way that you can get the delay in audition close to zero? You want to monitor your mic while you speak. It's there's a 200 millisecond delay. That's entirely dependent on the driver of your sound card. So um, again, uh, now I I use Focusrite here. Terry's got Apogee and Behringer um, running on the Mac. I'm via the buffer settings and um, the monitoring out of the devices themselves, I'm able to get virtually, you know, a zero millisecond delay when I'm monitoring. 200 milliseconds, that's that's quite a lot. I mean, you're, you're getting well beyond a slapback. That to me seems like that would be, um, you know, that's, that's related to the driver that you're using for the device that you're using. Um, you should be able to certainly go Audition natively certainly allows for lower than 200 milliseconds. Um, but a lot of that has to do with the device. Right. Looks like you joined that library. Yep. Okay. Let's see if we got some content over there. Cool. Okay. All right. So what I did is I took the lower third that I just created, saved it to a CC library. I'm on my computer. Jason's on his. We happen to be right next to each other, but we could be right next to each other, or he could be in Phoenix where he lives, or he could be in San Francisco working. 
doesn't matter. I just shared that into a CC library. Uh, he accepted that and is there it? It's coming. It's, it should be in the library, not your file folder. So bring up your libraries panel. Okay, yeah, all right. So here we go. Jason and Terry. Yep, that's the one. There, and we there go. it is. Okay, so let me Boom. pop over to you. Okay. And there it is. Nice. So let's go ahead and if we can just bring And this. so that's just a graphic um, because all I did was select all the layers in Photoshop and shared it as a composite. I could have shared the individual layers. I could have shared the PSD to a folder. Lots of ways to share in Creative Cloud, but now he's got the composite so he can place that in the video anywhere he wants. Yeah. And we can get rid of the one that I did, which looked bad. <laughs> oh, it looked bad. Uh, that's all right. That's okay. There we go. So much nicer. And frankly, you know, if I just wanted to do quick and dirty, I could do the same uh, opacity adjustment on this, wind this back here like that, and just fly the whole thing on. There you go. Real easily. Okay. Or I could have given them the pieces. That's you know, right. Right. I could exactly. Have added the, I still can. I can go add the individual pieces to the same library, and then you can animate them on separately. Yep. So cool. Oh, I love it when I love it when things work. Yeah, I know, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the essence they always of work. live stream. That's right. Always. That's always. right. So, how do you get ProRes four 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 from After Effects on a PC? So, you're talking about export, obviously, Ben. Um, you know, Apple doesn't allow that with Microsoft, but there are third-party uh, um, providers who make ProRes codecs on the Windows side. I don't remember. I don't remember the name of the one. There's someone who makes that. It's it's third party though. It, it's not through Apple. Um, and Nathaniel is asking. Sorry, I missed that. Could you give a brief description of a library and how you would share how you, or how you how, of that and how you share a library? Mm -hmm. So again, we'll go back to my machine. Um, you're li you have a CC library panel now in all of the desktop apps um, and most of the mobile apps as well have CC library access. So bring up your library panel, create a new library if you don't have one already. Once you create that new library, you can add whatever content you want into it. So for example, I can go layer by layer of this file and I can say, you know what, add that in um, as a separate layer, add this in as a separate layer, and now he's getting those individual pieces if he wants to animate them separately. Mm -hmm. Add the Creative Cloud logo as a layer. And they're coming into my graphics pad, into right? His <laughs> and they're layer. popping in right now. So, um, oh, I added the color. I meant to add the, uh, the graphic. Oh, do I not have that selected? Oh, you know what? Let's just do it this way. Da, 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 da. Oh, that's, I'm, that's awesome. I'm watching all the elements pop in on my side. Oh, too. that layer is already, I uh, see what's going on. That layer is already part of an existing it's library. It's part of an existing so library. Let's go okay. ahead and, um, let's go ahead and make that not the case. Let's render that out. Ant's asking, how much coffee versus tea have I had today? Is the cutback working? The cutback is working. Yes, you know this. Yes, I'm down is. from 12 espressos a day to what I now like to call my two New York deli style cups of coffee. All right. And, and Nathaniel, to finish that off before we talk about coffee, <laughs> to share it, you, you go to collaborate. So when you go to collaborate, it'll take you to the website, let you put in as many email addresses as you want of other Creative Cloud users. Yep. And then they will have access to the library. So now if we go over to his machine. Yep. Boom. It's all in there. So cool. Boom. He's got those graphics I just added. Right. So while I was adding, it was syncing up to the cloud down to his machine. And they're <laughs> yeah, I gotta remember right. I left and they're right. available okay. offline. So yep. they're now on our hard drives locally as well as synced to the cloud. Okay, mm -hmm. coffee. Yep. Yeah. So I'm good. Yeah. I had one. I had one cup at the hotel this morning, and I got another cup sitting over I there. I got a cup over there. I can't get to. Yep. Oh, I can. I can bring it to you. No, it's okay. Uh, so yes, and <laughs> it is. It is going well. I'm keeping it. Uh, I'm, I'm keeping it real. Although Guy Bosch says there's no such thing as too much coffee. I fully agree. I fully agree. But for for the sake of my for the sake of my of my heart. Yes. I've decided to we want to uh, keep Jason around. A I've, I've decided to, to to cut it back after we won't say how long because that'll reveal. The origins of all this gray, but uh, it's it's been a really long time. We're reading your comments here. All right. Um, does Photoshop have a three D animation feature? Animation? No. It's got three D, but not animation. Right. Uh, let's see. What else have we got here, guys? When do we sleep? 
Uh, you know, they're the regular times. Well, two to three. <laughs> two to three, right? <laughs> yeah, right. In the morning. Uh, any news on Adobe Story CC for 2017? So here's what I can tell you. Um, Story is still is still happening, and stay tuned. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar, Adobe Story is an application of ours that allows you to do screenwriting, scheduling, um, all kinds of very cool things with regard to scripts. Uh, it's still around. There used to be a native app for it. It's, it's in progress, so um, it is not dead. Okay. Why you are composing? Sales. That's the one I didn't get. Oh, yeah, yeah. is this something you can do when a video but is live? But Evil Series that answered it. So okay, okay, I see. Yes, yeah. no, we are live. We are. It is. Yes. We are not live. This is a recording. We're is, reading your comments in the yes. future. Right. Where we recorded it and came back and put it up as a video on demand. Don't tell our secret. It is twelve forty-six p.m. on the East Coast, and we got about <clears> four <throat> minutes. About four got, minutes. Like, do 70 miles an hour to the airport. Yeah, right. Oh, <laughs> all right, I have to leave. <laughs> yeah. I forgot. That's right. I have to fly out yeah. of here. The video of him dancing. Were you dancing? Good Lord, I hope not. Yeah, me either. All right. We're not, we, we have no idea. Tara, what we're not sure Tara. what's what's happening, but uh, I, are you talking about the Creative Cloud video of me dancing, I guess is what that was I was doing? I that was not live. That was obviously green screened in the studio. Um. This one here of me talking moments ago, that was just shot in the hotel. Um, by the way, someone was asking, I saw up there, I missed their name, but uh, how come they're shooting 4K on their iPhone, uploading to Facebook, and it's not 4K, but it is on their desktop. So Facebook video requires 720p. You can upload 1080, you can upload 4K. Mm -hmm. They're only delivering it at 720p. The same goes for our live streams. Right. The live streams are 720p. They will do a transcode conversion upon your upload in any case. So that's why no matter what you're shooting there, it's 720p when it's delivered on Facebook. And similarly, yeah, if you Facebook, go into Media Encoder. Facebook highly compresses yeah, everything. Super compressed. Photos don't look nearly as good as they look anywhere else because they're applying an extreme amount of compression totally. to it. Totally, and you'll even notice that in Media Encoder, if you were to do destination publishing directly to Facebook, which we allow, our preset, again, regardless of what you're cutting in, you could be cutting in 6K, the preset is designed to export uh, 720p. All right. Yeah. All right, Alzer Graphic Designer is asking, Spark Post app, why do I get bad quality videos out? Um, I don't know. It depends, it could depend on what you are setting your size to be. So keep in mind that even though you can animate in Spark Post, you still are lim you're still are setting a size of the actual project. So if you're making a very small video, then and you're trying to post it large, then it's going to be not as good. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. So um, I would invite you before you try and even animate or export it, check the size of the project um, to make sure it's big enough for where you intend on putting it to make sure the video will look better. So Thomas, how is Adobe incorporating VR, AR, and Adobe CC? Which applications? More to come. More to come. So again, we talked earlier, uh, currently today in Premiere Pro, you have support for Equirectangular 360 video with Ambisonic 4-channel audio. Uh, announced last week, we just acquired Metal's Skybox plugin suite of VR 360 uh, plugins to allow you to do stitching, to allow you to do editing and some really amazing like text projection and effects things in 360 VR space. Um, and there's more to come. We're more just doing more and more. Yeah. Can't talk about things we haven't announced yet. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Otherwise right. then they become announcements That's right. <laughs> and then you hold them to hold us to it. We're not announcing. Yes. Yeah, we're not announcing. Yeah. Yeah, and so you say, right, say 4K you is not question. necessary for Facebook yeah. overkill. Yeah, no, and they're only they're only displaying 720p in any case. So that's that that is the truth. All right, last couple of questions. So Ocean Z, uh, oh, okay, never mind. That's being that's another conversation. Mm -hmm. Nick is no longer being supported. That's correct. You can always check the Adobe um, Exchange for other plugins and uh, add-ons to your Adobe CC products. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, this is a good one, Nathaniel. So any update on the social publishing launching? Um, I don't have an update, Nathaniel, with the exception that I can tell you that we are um, again now actively uh, soliciting new beta testers. So here, let's see if I switch back. Oh yeah, so we switch back to, oh, to mine. Oh, I gotta raise it up. Yeah. Duh. Okay, hold on, sorry. I'll just pull this up so you can see it. Um, here's the URL, the top one. The bottom one is actually the announcement. Um, so I actually showed this again last week on a stream. In fact, you can find the replay of me talking about the social publishing panel right here on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. Um, go to the playlist that's called How to Make Great Videos, Episode 7. It's all chapterized so you can find exactly what time code position I'm talking about, the social publishing panel. Here's the URL, adobe.ly slash beta, And uh, you have to be accepted into the beta, it's not open but we are actively looking for new beta testers. I don't have a release date for you, but it is evolving, it is happening, and uh, we definitely would love more and more people checking it out and more and more feedback. All right, so um, let's see one more that was yeah. kind of nice in there. Maybe we can do one or, one or two more um, and then we gotta, we gotta cut it. What happened to Adobe SpeedGrade? So SpeedGrade is still around. Uh, Obviously, we've been adding more and more of the features uh, from SpeedGrade into Premiere Pro, but as of today, SpeedGrade is still still exists. Um, you can still get it as part of your Creative Cloud membership. All right. Can I upload my essential graphics templates to Adobe Stock? Ben, excellent question. Probably the number one question I received at NAB. Yep. Makes sense. We, I, I want, I want designers making templates. Yeah, for me. and so right now the answer is no. Right. So like the same thing goes for templates and 3D elements right. and all kinds of other things that we sell on stock. Those aren't open yet to the public to be able to submit to, but it's coming. Yep. Yeah. And we and they heard you loud and clear. It's a, it's a, another great way to uh, to sell your art and to do it in a way that's so easy and accessible. Um, it's just not there yet, but. The, the, the stock team has heard, they're listening. All right. Uh, okay, I made a screencast in OBS and MP4 and the playback worked well in Windows Media Player, but if I import it to Premiere, the video bucks and it didn't work. Okay, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, it could be a million things. Yeah, yeah. It's, hard, it's hard to say, Ben. I mean, MP4, Obviously, you were just looking at MP4 coming off of my uh, some of the some of the content there. Um, MP4s should work, but not all MP4s are created the same. Uh, you might also try, depending upon resolution, changing the fractional playback. If it was, I don't know if you meant to say the video sucked, <laughs> but if it was stuttering or skipping, uh, you may consider just dropping the fractional playback to see if it's in fact. A file issue or just you know playback issue inside of the application and Travis says Lightroom update question mark and I'm gonna say Travis stay tuned okay all right last one for me and then I'll let you sign off T Jeremiah's um, you want to know is there a way to create binaural sound digitally with mono recordings no the essence of binaural is to have stereo period and to properly capture binaural I mean well let me let me rephrase that you could theoretically, if you had two separately mono recorded streams that were in effect trying to capture what a stereo actual binaural recording would be doing. Um, I suppose, I suppose you could, but you know, to really capture binaural in a modern way, because actually binaural recording, just a quick uh, anecdote, was developed like in the, in, the, in the early part of the 19th century. Sorry, no, that would be the 20th century late 19th century, like 1890s or something, binaural existed via wire, and it was single channels delivered at separate times with two separate big sort of speakery things for your ears. Don't be doing that. Uh, if you want to create binaural, you know, actual binaural recordings, they sell those mannequin heads that have, you know, very, uh, very intense condenser microphones that fit into the ear canals, and that's how it has to be captured. You, you, you could theoretically sort of try and create it from mono signals, but again, you couldn't create binaural from just two random mono things. If it was two, like someone recorded a channel here and someone recorded a channel here, but it was done in the way that binaural is captured, yes, in theory you could combine the two to have a, a binaural recording, but it's probably not going to be as accurate um, and certainly not as spatial um, as doing it properly with one of those heads or a, a prop, or in this case, like an ambisonic microphone yeah. that converts to binaural. All right. Great questions. Continue, continue to hit us up on Twitter and all of our social channels. Um, we've got to sign off. I got to get this guy to the airport. <laughs>
And uh, we'll be back later this week for more. So follow the Creative Cloud channel. Follow us on our various Facebook properties for Creative Cloud, Premiere, After Effects, Photoshop, Lightroom, um, Student Channel, Adobe Desi CC Design, and CC Audio <laughs> Video. Ton of channels wow, on just, Facebook. You just got almost all of them right oh, there. That almost was impressive. All of them. Like, I, that was I probably good. left off a couple. That but um, we're looking forward to seeing you guys later this week, starting tomorrow, I guess. Yeah. We'll be on again. That's right. And uh, cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you so much. Great uh, having Jason in, in live in studio today. Thank it's you, T. awesome. Cheers, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye.